Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool. And tonight we are talking all about an insect theme for your classroom. So I want you to tell me in the comments, do you do an insect theme? Do you do a butterfly theme? Do you do a ladybug theme? Do you like break it up and do different insects or do you do it all at once? And how long are, do you do your themes? Do you do your themes for two weeks, a month, a week, a day? Who knows? So tell us in the comments what insect themes you guys do or if you do a generic one and how long you guys do your themes for because I'm always curious what you guys do in your classrooms and in your schools too. So just like every night, I'm going to walk, walk you guys around my classroom and I'm going to show you all the fun things we're doing with bugs and insects, but know that I never get to all these activities. Some of these are my tried and true, um, my favorites that I have. So I never get to all of these, especially since right now I teach half day Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, so I never get to all of it. So I just do the activities that my kiddos need to work on. So if we need to work on scissor skills, I do the scissor skills um, activities. Or if we need to work on shapes, I'll focus on the shape activities from this theme. So I do different activities every, every time I do the theme based on what my kiddos' needs and weaknesses and strengths are. So let's flip it. Oh, before I forget, if you go after, 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 you are done watching this, make sure you go to the top of this post because I have a fun caterpillar pattern freebie for you. So again, that, that's at the top. And then if you want to grab any of my insect printables from TPT, um, that link is at the top too. So I'm going to flip it around and we are going to get started. Okay. So let's start out with literacy because that's or you know what, let's start out with the freebie because that's, that's the most fun, right? All right, here we go. All right, so here is the fun freebie I have for you guys. Oops, sorry about those shakes. So there are very many options with this because I know some of you guys do worksheets, some of you guys don't do worksheets, some of you guys need things for your portfolios and artifacts and things. So I have a couple options. So the freebie has a couple options. So this is the first one. So it's a worksheet and they can use the bingo daubers. And this one has the different patterns, types of patterns listed on it. There's also one that's blank, which is the one I'll use with my kiddos. Um, and then there's one without the name on it, which you can turn into a pattern mat. So if you, don't like worksheets um, and you want to use like manipulatives with it to make your patterns, that would be your best bet. So you could use pom-poms. Obviously I'm totally cheating making my pattern here. <laughs> um, but you could use pom-poms, you could use um, any like any circle glass gems, so any round manipulative. And you could have them use tweezers to put it on there to add in some fine motor. So you can tell I have, I made myself a set. I haven't laminated them yet, but I did make myself a class set of these mats because nine out of 10 times, I typically do like the math mat rather than like the worksheet. But it's spring and some of my kiddos are going to kindergarten. So this year I'm actually going, or actually um, tomorrow, we will be doing this one. Um, and I'll put it in their portfolio, so they'll be using the bingo daubers, which you can grab on Amazon or lit, you know wherever. They're even at like Michaels and Target. Um, but then they can dot the pattern. And if you don't like um, having the ABAB -A -B on that, you, what you what I do sometimes is I start the pattern for my kiddos, and then they have to finish it. So if I need to see what kind of patterns they do, I'll maybe start all the caterpillars with the different types of patterns, and then they have to extend it. So again, this is the freebie on the blog. So it's on there now, so you can go ahead and grab that after we're live. And there's three different options for you guys. So enjoy that. Okay, here's something that I made yesterday. So it's an egg carton. You guys know I love my egg cartons. This one's from Sam's. Um, and what I did was I, it's it's a honeybee hive if you can't tell. <laughs> I literally like drizzled um, yellow paint all over it and then I put some hot glue on it just to kind of make it look sticky even though it's not because honey is sticky. Um, so this is our honeycomb and what the kiddos can do is they will roll a dice and they can each have one. So like you could have a kiddo sit on each side and they could each have their own dice or they could take turns whatever you guys want to do for your kiddos, um, one. 
So they would pick out one and they could either put the bee in or they could put the pollen in. And then they would roll the dice again. I got four. So then they could count out four. And these um, bee counters, or bee, these are bee mini erasers and I got them from Amazon. I wanna say they're linked in my Amazon store. Um, whoops. So then they would just put those in the honeycomb and if you wanna have them do the pollen too or they can pick whichever, whoop. <laughs> whichever works for you so yeah so that's really fun and then again if you want to add tweezers to make it trickier or to sneak in fine motor you can do that and if you have kiddos that one dice is too easy go ahead and give them two dice they roll both dice and then they add it and um, count out the total so that's a fun um, counting game you can do with just things you have in your classroom and if you don't have the bees just use yellow pom-poms and I want to say these are like <laughs> yellow pom-poms from the dollar store <clears throat> and then if you want to make actual little caterpillars I have this one as a model just so I remember the activity so you just put out pony beads and again pony beads are usually at the dollar store and I usually cut my pipe cleaners in half that way they can make a couple to take home or you can even put pl plop these in a baggie and hole punch the baggie and put it in their portfolio um, but they make a pattern on here and then you just kind of, you know, um, whatever, like move the ends that way they, um, that way the beads don't blow off. But yeah, that way they can take it home if they want to. So this is more of a hands-on option. You have this freebie worksheet option and then you have like the, the math mat as an option as well. All right, we're just going to keep going. So ladybugs are perfect for counting and adding. So if you have itty bitty learners, they can cut out this craft. And this craft is, ladybug craft is in my insect math and literacy centers, which again is linked at the top of this post in my TBT store. So the, the pattern pieces are in there. And then I use a circle punch to cut out the dots and they can either put the number or they can write the addition sentence and perfect for a cute um, end of the year bulletin board and they can also cover it up and then they have to open it up and reveal either the number or the addition sentence. So really, really fun, um, fine motor, great for following directions and it's math. Um, another fun math activity in my insect um, math and literacy centers are just 10 frames. And 10 frames are kind of like a fun, easy go-to. They're great for like a morning table time activity or arrival activity or um, morning work. But they count out whatever you have. And they you can always um, have put dry erase markers out and they can trace the number as well as the word. And let's talk about like what fun manipulatives you can use. So you can make little ladybugs or bees and these are just counters that I spray painted um, these are just counters that I spray painted and then I um, draw it on dr I drew um, the dots and the lines on them with a sharpie so super super simple um, so you could use those have little homemade insect counters or you could use mini erasers and again these are from uh, these mini erasers I got at Party City in like a big, big giant bag and I just um, grabbed the insect counters out of it or I know these are on Amazon too. So you could use, um, you can make your own insect counters, you can use mini erasers, um, you can just use regular jewels too with those or any like little pom-poms. Um, some other fun math counters you can use. For this theme are these bugs, and these are from the dollar store. I wanna say like 10 come in a pack. This is probably like maybe like five packs or something. I do have snakes in here too, because the, there's like another snakes and lizards pack too. These are great for like the block center, for Play-Doh trays, and they're super cheap, it's awesome. And then you could use like the standard insect counter. These are the ones I got from their discount school supply, and I wanna say, I think I got these off Amazon, but yeah, these are really fun insect counters. And there's a whole bunch of different ones in there. There's like a whole bunch. Plus there's like a spider and a scorpion. And then look at these. Okay, they used to gross me out, but now they don't anymore. So these are just like worms from like the fishing section. Um, and I have washed these, but they still have like a weird oil on them. I can't get off, um, but it's not a big deal. Um, 
Like I wash them with soap and water. But a lot of them come with like, I kept one in here to show you guys, um, with this little tail and then I just cut it off. But they're in the fishing section, but they're really fun um, to use for counting. They can measure them, all kinds of fun things. If I have kiddos that put stuff in their mouth, I would not use these worms because I would be afraid they would like take a bite. So yeah. And then well, with bees, these are great to make honeycombs. So oh, it's like yellow. So you can do honeycombs. They can try and make honeycombs with different shapes by combining the different shapes, which is a common core objective to make shapes by combining different shapes. So they can make honeycombs. So make sure you're busting out your patterns if you're doing bees. So I'm gonna, oop, I have some more math over here. Let me keep going. So this is in my Insect Math and Literacy Centers pack. So it's just a shape matching game. But since it's spring and most people do their um, insect theme in the spring, I did add some harder shapes. So there's like a pentagon and a crescent and a trapezoid. So basically they're just match putting the bee in. And why can't I find a triangle? There's one. Oh, that's a trapezoid. That'll work. Oh, and it's stuck to the tray. Of course, right? So they just put the bee in the hive. So super fun and easy um, shape game. And you, if you have littler learners, just put those harder shapes away. And if you have learners that are more advanced, put out those harder shapes. So a fun journal activity you can do to work on fine motor and making lines is by placing these little bug stickers on their journal. And then as a group, you can model it first and then they can try it. Um, making different types of lines. So what I usually do if I do an activity like this, I give everybody a little square of stickers and I'll say, okay, put one sticker on. Okay, here's the line we're gonna make this time. We're gonna make, this bee is bouncing. He's making a, you know, he's bouncing, you know, over the leaves or something. And they, then they make their bounce leaves. Okay, put another sticker on. <gasps> Look, the bee is zooming so fast. He's gonna go on a straight line. Zoom, can you make your bee zoom? Zoom. And then they go straight across. So one, they're putting their own stickers on, which means they won't do them all <laughs> before you get to them. And two, it's great fine motor. And then it gives them a little bit of control as well. So yeah, just cut up those sticker sheets. And then I've found they have like what are they? little like bugs. There's like bees. And then I just found these at my teacher store. Um, they have butterflies. And I usually they're I usually buy these stickers at my teacher store. Um, but, and you can do this with, if for anything, with any little, little stickers. I love that activity for journals. <clears throat> or you can just grab a sheet of paper too and do it. So let's move on to some literacy stuff. So in my math and literacy centers pack, I have this fun syllable game. So I put all these bugs on little sticks and then, oh, I'm really shaky tonight, guys. Sorry. So this, what I would either do for small group or I could do it as a transition. So I would say, okay, come up and pick a, a bug and then tell me how many syllables and then they can stick it in and then they can go like wash their hands for snack or line up to go outside or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so like stink bug has two and it's really fun ladybug has three, caterpillar has four, but it's really fun just to kind of stick them in these little cups. And these are just those dried peas and if I have, after I do it as a small group, what I do is I put it in the center and I literally just take this tray and I would put it on top where that blank spot is. Hmm? I would put it right there. So that way they can do it during centers independently. And everybody always asks how I store my sensory goodies, which these peas I use all the time. And I literally, okay, my kids love these cheese balls. <laughs> And they eat them all the time. So I save the container. So any kind of large plastic container, because I live in the country, so I, I really have to make sure everything has a lid and it's not in a baggie because um, the mice will get in our house. <laughs> you know, hopefully that, but every once in a while, the, those little stinkers come in. So another fun name craft. So this is a fun name craft you can do. So you guys can either make your own circles or... This, um, the, this printable is in my math and literacy insect center pack. Um, but so they cut out the head and then they make their name. They can do it in uppercase and lowercase. 
And then I just use, they taped pipe cleaners on for the eyes and then they glued on some little feet. And then if you have kiddos who are struggling with scissors, just give them these bounce back ones and they bounce back open, they're great. So you can find these at the dollar store. However, the dollar store ones, they do break. I, I, I have found them like two months or so. Um, so I've just invested in these ones from Amazon. And again, those are linked at the top. So if you go to the dollar store, get some fly swatters because these are super, super fun. Because look at this, they can swat letters, they can swat numbers, shapes. So these are just some foam butterflies. And we did this for gross motor. So I put, um, these are the letters some of my kiddos are struggling with. Um, so that, so I put those on these ladybugs and I spread them out around my circle area. And I only have eight kids. So if you have a bigger class, you can either use these that are in my math and literacy centers pack or you can just do it for small group. And I would call out a letter and they would have to go find it and then they would have to swat it. And I had them swat next to it, that way the other friends who were looking for that letter could still find it. Um, so yeah, so you can do this with letters, with numbers, and you don't have to have these foam shapes. If you have my Math and Literacy Centers, you can use these little fly letters and they come in uppercase and they come in lowercase. But what we're gonna do with these um, on I th when, so, next week, I'm gonna put these, they're gonna spread these out on the floor and then they're gonna have to swap the letters in their name for my three-year-olds. And then my pre-K friends, we've started working on some sight words. So they'll spread out the lowercase flies and they'll have to pick a sight word card and then they'll have to swat the letters in the sight word and, and identify the sight word. But again, we'll spread the letters out like on the carpet or something. Um, that way they can actually see all of them. And it gets them moving because fly flatters, they're, you know, you get to do like a big movement with that. So yeah, so grab some fly spotters because those are really, really fun for an insect unit. So let me walk you guys over and I will show you. Yeah, so somebody's asking, oh, I'm showing you my library center, sorry. Um, these are some really fun puzzles. This one I got from Scholastic. Melissa and Doug has a really fun giant jumbo bug floor puzzle. So for some of you guys that watch me all the time, so you guys know right now I teach half day. It's just me by myself with eight kiddos. So I used to teach full day and I did for 12 years, I think. I always forget, like 10 or 12, I can't remember. So I thought I taught full day preschool Monday through Friday um, with 18 kiddos a day and I always had at least one um, other teacher with me. So for those of you who have more, you can totally do all this stuff. You'll just have to do it more during small group time um, rather than whole group since my whole group is kind of like a small group. So yeah, but for my, my teacher friends who do have all those, all those 18 or 20 or, oh, Lisa has 21 three-year-olds. Oh, oh, gosh, I, I'm, I'm hoping you have like two teachers with you. But, um, so just know like it is possible to do all this stuff. You'll just, you know, have to do a lot of this during a um, small group. Or if you do during table time, you can have, you know, different activities at each table, which is what I did when I taught full day. So let me... So this was what we did for morning table time. And again, if you have 18 kiddos, I would put this activity at one table and then do a different activity at another because obviously you're not gonna buy, have 18 of these trays. And everybody always asks, where are these trays from? So these are lacing trays and they're either Melissa and Doug or sometimes they're in the Target dollar spot, but a lacing set comes in them. And I just use them mostly for to use them as a writing tray, but you can also use like a plate with a lip on it or a pencil box and then you, they can close it too. So what they did was I put these letter puzzles out in the middle of the table and I had, and now, now look, I don't have all the alphabet out. Definitely do not have the whole alphabet out because there's three cards for each letter. So there's the uppercase and then the lowercase and then the sound card. And what they have to do, and again, I'm using this like those dried peas again, and which is just something we haven't done in the writing trays yet, and they can pick to make the uppercase or the lowercase letter. And then, just to make it extra fun, what they did was they made the letter with the mini erasers. 
And you guys, they went bananas for this. Okay, it's really hard to do one-handed, guys. But I won't make the whole thing, make you guys watch me make a letter. But you get the idea. So they would write it, and then they could make the letter with the mini erasers. And it was really fun to watch. So it was really fun, because I have, I have three, four, and five-year-olds together. So it was really fun to watch my pre-K friends help my three-year-old figure out the sound cards or if they didn't know the lowercase it was really fun to be for me to watch them help and some of my um, pre-k friends were e even giving them clues like oh it's the the eh, eh, apple you know that goes with a so it was really fun to watch them talking about letters and talking about sounds and trying to help our little three-year-olds or even so my pre-k friends were helping each other out um, trying to figure out which card um, went with each letter. So that was really fun. I love this. I love spring when they're just that classroom community is just built and it's strong and they help each other and they have so many skills. So yeah, all right, I'm, I'm gonna keep going with library. If you're doing an insect theme, you gotta do The Hungry Caterpillar. And it is a great story to sequence. I guess some of my, one of my kiddos did this for an activity during center time. So you can see the other cards or over here. So you can either sequence what he ate or you can do the life cycle sequence. So um, I would read this book two times. Um, we only read it once, so we just focus on the life cycle, but we do a lot of retelling. So I just had, to, all I did was tell them, I'm like, you can also use the um, story cards and retell the story based on what he ate and that's enough for them right now and they can come over here and do it um, independently. Um, so some of you guys are saying that your kiddos dump the writing trays. So what, yeah, somebody was saying that what they do first is let them explore them. So before you put out a letter card with them, I would definitely put these out and I would do it during small group time and I would teach them how to use these trays. So <clears throat> what I would do is to say, oh, just, you know, our rule is, you know, one finger in the material and it, it has to stay glued glued to the table or glued to the floor wherever you're doing the activity and when we shake to erase and everybody let's practice together shake 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 it stays glued to the table because if it comes up these things will bounce out and they'll get all over so yeah so I would practice first and do like a small group on how to use them and then once they can use them success successfully um, during table time or during small group then I would put them out in a in a center and I have a whole um Facebook Live on these um, writing trays. So make sure you guys hop over and watch that if you are interested. So here is my writing center. So you can see I have four stools at it because they, they like, oh, I, oh my gosh. Why, why do I even try to like <laughs> not knock things over? Okay, so usually they squeeze in lately because I've been, my, my kiddos at this point in the year especially have been loving the writing center and Look what I put at the writing center. If your kiddos are not excited about writing, put out letter Legos or letter beads or whatever letter manipulative they love, put those at your writing table. Because even though they aren't writing, they are still making words. Um, everybody's gonna ask. So these are, they come just in lowercase. They are word building blocks from Lakeshore. And I think Lakeshore really needs to call me next time they make some of their stuff because I would really love if they had these in uppercase and at least as of like three months ago they didn't. But um, so yeah, so they're just in lowercase and then the vowels are red. But I put these out and my boys um, or my builders, my girls that are builders love coming over here and making words and they can either make the um, insect words or I have their names over here as well and then on one side is the uppercase and on the other side is the lowercase and these are a freebie in my TBT store if you want to grab them but these are always in my writing center as an option because you know they're obsessed with each other right they love writing each other's names and I do have the uppercase out for my little guys and I have the lowercase out on the table because um, usually my pre-k friends are the ones making these anyways and these are all again in my um, math and literacy insect centers and I do have these cutting I have some of my friends are really loving cutting right now so 
These are, you can use these either cutting strips or they can trace or they can trace and then cut. So I just have a whole bunch of them. I color, copied on colored paper, put them in a bucket with some scissors and some glue and some tape. So if you have kiddos who are not excited about the writing center, just go ahead and put some other things there. Because once they get there, and they see how much fun it is, then they might pick up the paper and they might pick up the marker, but if they're, they don't even go there in the first place, they're never gonna pick up that paper. So get them excited about going there and then hopefully you can get them writing. Or maybe their friend's writing and then maybe that'll be enticing enough. So here is my bug or an insect book, sh book shelf. So I will show you guys my favorite. So my, my I think my all time favorite is the ants go marching i just love this book and it's a song and ugh, once you read it a couple times they just start singing it and i it's great for rhyming i think it's my favorite all-time insect book and of course you know you had there was no lady who swallowed a fly i mean you got to have that one out and the grouchy ladybug and the hungry caterpillar are another couple favorites if you want a fabulous beautiful nonfiction. Um, a butterfly's patient is gorgeous. There's also one about a beetle, um, and I can't remember, but the illustrations are gorgeous. It does have a little bit of extra text, so sometimes I um, only read like the first line um, with my little guys, or maybe you just read part of it. And I think that's okay to show kiddos. You don't ever have to read the whole book, um, and you can also read the pictures. You don't have to read all of those words. And Beetle Bop is amazing by Miss Denise Fleming. Love her. Um, another one I just got are, is this Bug Zoo when I went to the NACI conference in October. And it's about this little guy, Ben, and he loves bugs. And look at these illustrations. It's actually made by um, the Walt Disney artists. So it, the illustrations are awesome. They kind of look like they're almost clay. And he loved armored teeny leggy greeny bugs so it has lots of descriptions in it and he wants to make a bug zoo and i won't tell you the end but it talks about how you know the bugs are cramped and they um kind of like how do we take care of animals um and is it the best idea to put them all in jars and look what he does. Okay, I'm going to give you give away the end. So he loves bugs, and he puts them back in nature. So it's also a great book about talking about how we might love nature and how we can take care of our world and all the insects and plants, how we need to, you know, kind of like look at nature but let it be. Um, so that's a, a really good one. So bugs do. All right, let me show you guys some art. So look what I got. I got a fun Play-Doh tray for you guys. Okay, so this one, and you guys, I'm still cheating this year. <laughs> so I have, you can totally make your own Play-Doh, but I just don't have time right now. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. Um, so I cheat, and I just put in little containers of Play-Doh. And then, so for this one, I have green gems from the Dollar Tree, pebbles from the Dollar Tree, I have a circle and an oval cookie cutter, a rolling pin, which is from Walmart. These are just like plastic little leaves from plants from the dollar store. I have some bugs, and then I have worms. Oh, some more worms. And these I got, I must have scrubbed these a little bit better because these don't have the oil on them like they did, like the other ones did. Um, but yeah, these are just, again, from the fishing section at Walmart. And then they get to make and create all kinds of fun things. And they gra always grab a tray because they're right there um, underneath. So yeah. So there is my big, beautiful insect or bug Play-Doh tray. So another fun art project you can do is make bugs. And you can tell we did this today because that little guy is wet. <laughs> um, so they made bugs with um, these balloons and then they drew the legs and the grass with oil pastels. So we talked about, we observed our ants this morning because um, we have ants, which I'll show you in a minute, and we noticed that all insects have three body parts. So they stamped, that one smooshed, but they stamped their balloon and all these are is balloons 
and they just stamped them. And this tray is from Walmart, if you're wondering. Um, they did three times and they added six legs and two antennas, like we talked about when we were noticing and observing our ants. And I just put out, I, I always break my oil pastels just because I don't, that way I don't have to buy a whole bunch of the packs because they're expensive. That way we have more colors and we can do activities like this with them. So yeah, and then I just, everybody was on a tray because, you know, they get it everywhere. So yeah, and look, here they are. I'll show you guys. So here are some more of them. Look at those little buggies. Oh, and I love how each one is different. And you can tell which ones are three-year-olds and which ones are pre-K, but it is so much fun. And I just put out green, whoops, I ran into the table, green paper. So you can also do butterflies. And there's so many ways you can do butterflies. Um, so this is my favorite way, because also you can talk about symmetry with this. So what they do is I got these little squirters, um, these little squirt bottles from Discount School Supply, and they basically just squirt the paint on the one side. So it's kind of like a fun smash art. And then they can also, if you have older kiddos, they can either make their plan before or they can draw it after um, on a page if you want to kind of take the math up a notch. And they just put the paint on there and then they smash it. And then when they open it up, if I can with one hand. So there it is. So obviously you would want them to put more paint on there. Um, but yeah, these little squeezies are my favorite because that way they know that this is all they get and that way they have to share with their friends. Um, but yeah, so I just pre-cut the butterflies on white paper and then here's one that's dry and then afterwards I just glue antennas on and then they're beautiful butterflies for your classroom. Have it ever have a kiddo who just smears it and doesn't stamp it? Um, sometimes, but if they want to finger paint their butterfly, that's that's totally fine with me. It doesn't bother me. Um, my art center is independent, so we, if it's something like this, we'll do it um, during small group time, um, and then I will put it out for the activity. So like we did this today for small group. So then what'll probably happen is is I will put this on. Um, this shelf which this open spot is usually for our art choice activity for the week and then I'll put all of these in like a little cup with with the white paper behind it that way they will know that they can make another one if they want and if we have the butterfly activity out it would be on that white shelf as well and I usually put an example out if it's open-ended just so they kind of know kind of what the end result should be um, here's another fun one. So again, I had these fly swatters. I covered my table with a shower curtain first. And <laughs> they fly swatted their art. And I've been wanting to do it outside on like a giant mural because it would be gorgeous and really fun. Gross motor work, great for their shoulders um, to get those upper arms really, really strong in their core. But it's been raining and like wet outside. So what they did, and again, I use these little squeezy bottles. They're my favorite. Um, they, you can tell on this one. <laughs> um, they squeeze little dots on their paper, and then they just smack that paint and just had a ball. And then at the end, they said they needed insects. So I was like, oh, here, I'm going to give you some stickers. So then they put in little insect stickers. And it did make a mess. It absolutely made a mess, but it was so much fun. Totally worth it. But how, how neat are those? So yeah, so super, super fun. So fly swatters you can use for art too. So what I'm gonna do next is show you the sensory table, the block center, and science. And then that's it. Oh, so normally I show you what dramatic play theme we're doing, but last week at the end when I was told them like today was the last day for our pretend aquarium, they, got so upset. So we have our aquarium still this week in our pretend center. So if they ask for the pretend to be longer, I totally do it. Um, they are like loving our aquarium and our pretend center. Would, but yeah, so I don't have a pretend to show you, but some fun, fun pretend thing, themes you can do are you can do a flower shop and pretend for an insect theme. You can do camping for an insect theme. Those are both like my go-tos. I was gonna do a campsite, but they, they said no, they want an aquarium, so we kept it. All right, 
All right, so let's, ooh, here, ooh, ooh. Let me show you the sensory table first, because that's always. So in here we have black beans. And if you don't want to do black beans, you can do dirt, but just make sure there's no pesticides or chemicals in the dirt you're using in your classroom to keep your kiddos safe. Or you can use rubber mulch. Um, my kiddos are really into filling and just um, scooping this year, so you can't do that very well with rubber mulch. Um, so I just use black beans again, black beans instead of the rubber mulch, because you can't really scoop and pour and um, the rubber mulch. And then these are just insect counters, like math counters. And then I have some leaves, which I cut off um, like fake flowers from the dollar store. Worms that you can kind of barely see. These are just some plastic jars they have, so they can like, you know, catch the bugs, fill up the jars, whatever they want to do. And then I have these, which are great. Um, yeah, if you can't use food, um, totally put in rubber mulch, then that, that'll, be, that'll work for you. Um, so yeah, so these are great because it's that scissor skill motion, and these are from Learning Resources. Um, I think they come in like a pack of four on Amazon, that's where I found them. Um, but yeah, so they basically are using that scissor skill motion, and they can scoop and fill. So if you have kiddos who are struggling with scissor skills, grab some of these handy, I want to call them handy scoops, and now they can do scissor skills without actually like having to use scissors. Um, so that's really fun. And then I just have some tiny little shovels and rakes from the dollar store. So that is our Fundy Done sensory table. Let me show you science. Oh, and then this is also in my math and literacy centers pack. We're just, I just have this out and they can sort the insects different ways by size, insect, not an insect, and if it flies or crawls. So always don't forget when you are sorting things to always not do, like do something else, like do like a characteristic or something um, besides like color, shape, and size. So like I said, we have ants. So I got this little ant mountain guy. There's none on the front. I wonder if they're on the back. Oh, look at that. So there they are on the back. So, okay, if anybody else has had this ant thing, this ant mountain, this is my first time doing ants. It said they were supposed to like make tunnels in this stuff. Yeah, mine haven't. Um, so yeah, so I don't, they're really fun to watch still. Once I put the food in and you have to put like a couple drops of water in every day and you can tell here's the, like the food all the way down there the bottom that we have fed them. Um, they move around a lot, but yeah, they're not making tunnels in the back, like like it said. So if you guys have any suggestions for me, let me know. I don't know what I can do, but. So this, all of these ant printables and life cycle and um, parts of the ant charts, those are all in my insect math and literacy centers, or not, sorry, my insect science pack. Um, there's also, if you're doing ladybugs, ladybugs is also in there. Because I have kiddos for two years, so I don't, and I get bored too. <laughs> so I don't do the same insect every year. Um, so yeah, so that's really fun. Um, and we, they're like loving, loving the ants. But yeah, they're not, they're not making tunnels like it said they were supposed to be. So I don't know. But they're still loving them. So if the kids love it, then it's a win for me. And I hung up some of their discovery pages. So what we did was, is in my circle area over there, I put the ants on the floor and they all laid and they had to have their hands on their, they had to lay with their hands, sorry. They had to lay with their hand, their chin and their hands or like basically like put their hands back to make sure they weren't, you know, poking the poor ant, the poor ant colony. Um, and we observed them and then they got their clipboards out and they drew pictures of them. If you have like 20 kiddos, just do it during small group time. So people are saying that if the gel ones work better, did you push down the middle? No, I didn't use a stick. Oh, maybe, maybe I can still do that. I'll try that. I'll try like making like a little hole to get them started. Oh, and then we have our big giant um, parts of an ant poster too. And then I wanted to do caterpillars too. Um, so typically I only do one insect at a time, but we are also doing the caterpillars and look how big they are. 
Get in so big. Um, so this is my science butterfly unit. So I kind of have two insects going. Um, and it'll be fun because at the end we're going to like compare the life cycle and things and co just compare and contrast um, butterflies versus ants. So that'll be really, really fun. Um, so yeah, so the butterfly is all by itself. So this is the butterfly science pack and there's obviously a lot more in it. And then the ants is in the insect one and that one also has ladybugs. That way you can kind of flip flop and go back and forth. And then here's the block center. So I have my spring um, build it cards. I think I grabbed a couple from the habitat pack too. So these are the stem, I can build cards. Um, and then I have out these moss rocks I got from the dollar store, just some fake flowers from the dollar store, tree blocks, um, discount school supply in the art and craft section, rocks from the dollar store, leaves from the dollar store, and then look at these amazing bugs. So some of these are from the Target dollar spot last year. Some of these, like this grasshopper, I just got at the, at the Dollar Tree. So check the Dollar Tree. Um, check like um, the dollars, you know that little animal section at Walmart, sometimes they have bugs. Um, but yeah, but like I, I just got this big cool fly and this grasshopper and another one I can't remember from the Dollar Tree. So check those out. And you can always use little ones too. They don't always have to be big. Um, and then I have the mats, which are just foam. Even though they're textured, they were from the Dollar Tree like a bazillion years ago, but just put out like foam or felt, like brown for mud, blue for water, and green for grass. That way, if you're, ch so the top of my shelf is really the only thing that changes <clears throat> for each theme. And I have the, the top blank because I'm hoping some of them will draw their buildings and I can hang them up. So that's why the top's blank if you're wondering. And um, and yeah, so the only top part of my shelf changes and that way they're always building and engineering something new. That way they're not building the same thing over and over because they're not learning if they're doing the same thing over and over and over. And then this is something I'm introducing to them on Friday. So we're So this is my dollhouse from Ikea. We are gonna change it into an insect house. So I have out ribbon, which I love. I just buy like spools of ribbon. They can cut and tape it all up. And then I have crepe paper from the dollar store. And then I just have some green paper. And what they're gonna do is just decorate it or make it into an insect house. And I do have an insect house book, just some random one from Scholastic I found. And then they can put the, the fake bugs in it. So just a fun idea, just to kind of, um, cause some kiddos don't like to build, but some kiddos love the dollhouse. So why not use your dollhouse and change it into different things too. So like when we're doing construction, you can put straws and wires and carpet squares and like those um, like wallpaper samples in there and they can pretend like the dollhouse is under construction. Or if you're doing a zoo, you know, put out different things so they can make it into a habitat for one of the animals or something. Somebody's asking what age I teach. So I have a multi-age, so I have three, four, and five-year-olds together. And then some of them I have for two years. All right, well, you guys have a great night.